Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about chime modules. Chime modules are an accessory board that are added into Newtone Intercom master stations and they provide a door chime tone that rings throughout your intercom systems. Chime modules originally came out in 1982, but the mainstream chime modules that we'll be talking about are the models that were made from 1984 through about the end of 2008. These models include model IA27, which was a very short-lived model. It was only in production for a couple of years. Models IA28, which are by far the most common chime modules, and IA29s, which are a musical chime module. The two biggest problems that I get questions about all the time are a lot like this one. Steven wrote in, he has a Newtone IM3303, the doorbell is not working, it's getting power to the button, but the chime doesn't ring. And that's a fairly common type of question that I get two or three times every week. And people don't understand what to do or understand how to solve the problem. So chime modules have two basic types of problems. Either the chime module won't ring or quite the opposite, the chime module won't stop ringing. And the causes for these are similar, but of course different. So before you can try to troubleshoot your chime module, you have to understand how the chime module is interconnected into your intercom system. So in this basic diagram, what I'm showing you is the big blue rectangle is your master station. It doesn't matter which master station model you actually have, the way the chime module interconnects into it is the same in all models. So you have a master station installed in your home, and at the time of the original installation, the installer added into it an accessory chime module. And here's actually, this is a real chime module. This is what I have drawn here on the board. And we'll show, I'll show you one of these later on uh, close up in the video. So in your master station, the installer mounted the chime module board. And off the edge of the chime module board is a long ribbon cable. And at the end of the ribbon cable is a connector. And that connector is plugged into a socket on your master station and that connects the chime module into the system. It becomes an integral part of the master station. So here in the drawing, this represents the ribbon cable. And some models, the ribbon cable is permanently attached to the chime module. And on some earlier ones, there'll be a plug-in, it's a plug-in cable and there's a socket on the chime module, just like the socket on the master station. When you go to plug a chime module in, the ribbon cable on all chime modules have one edge with a red stripe. The red stripe helps you index it, so when you plug it into the socket, you plug it in correctly. The socket, which is mounted on one of the circuit boards of the master station, has four pins because it's a four conductor ribbon cable, and the pins will be numbered one, two, three, and four. The edge with the red stripe always corresponds with pin number one. If you plug it in backwards, you'll blow up the chime module and then you'll have to buy a new one. So it's important to pay attention. Down the face of the chime module, there are four screw terminals. You have one large screw terminal and it's marked as common on the circuit board. And then the other three terminals are marked as side, rear, and front. And the purpose of these are in a home where you have two or three entry doors, each one of these connections will ring differently than the other two. The idea is that you'll know where the visitor is at, which door they're pushing the button at. Most installations, at least in this area, people only have one doorbell button on their front porch. So you'll have a wire connected to uh, the front terminal and a wire connected to the common. The other part of your door chime module circuit is out on your front porch or at however many entry doors your home actually has. So this represents a front door speaker station and all the front door speaker station is is a decorative grill. It'll have a push button to ring the chime 
and it'll have a speaker which is just for communication. The speaker doesn't have anything to do with the chime module. It'll have its own separate wires that go back to the master station, but we're not really talking about door speakers today. We're talking about chime modules, so our focus is going to be on the push button. In some installations, the push button is on the door speaker grill itself. In other installations, especially on older homes, the doorbell button might be mounted down on the wall below the door speaker. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just whatever the builder or the installer decided to do in, that, in your particular home. The button will be connected by two individual wires that travel back through the walls of your house, back to the master station, and they're the wires that connect to the chime module. Here I've drawn one wire in, in the yellow, and the second wire is the brown. Sometimes you'll have a multi-conductor cable. Multi-conductor means one cable that will have many wires inside of it, and in a multi-conductor cable, two of the wires may be used to connect to the door speaker, and then two of the other wires will be used for the push button, and it'll all go back to the master station, and the appropriate wires will drop out of the cable and be connected to the correct terminal. There are three things to check, or there are three things that a homeowner can check to figure out why their chime module either won't ring or won't stop ringing. And those three things are, you can check the chime module itself, you can check the push button at your entry door, and you can check the wiring that connects the push button to the chime module. There could be a fourth item, which would be to check the master station also. It is possible when you have a chime module that won't ring, that you have a problem with their master station and that the chime module is activating appropriately and it's sending the appropriate signal into the master station, but due to a failure in the master station, the, the tones aren't being heard or being amplified throughout the system. Checking the master station is not something that most people can do because the real way to do that would be to have a second chime module in good working order that you know is good and plugging it into the master in place of the one that's installed in the master. And most people don't have a second chime module, so we're not really gonna address that at this point. Also, that's probably the least common problem with chime modules. So the testing order for chime modules should be you check the chime module first, you check the push button second, and then you check the wiring third. And this is a reasonable and logical order to do this in. So let's look at number one problem, which is your chime module won't ring. If your chime module won't ring, let's look at the circuit and see how things are supposed to operate and then figure out how to check it. So in a properly working chime module system, a visitor comes up to your front door, they push the doorbell button, it makes a closure across the ends of the yellow and brown wire that closure, which the other ends of those wires are connected to the chime module, trigger the chime module. It rings, it goes through its chime cycle, sending the tones to the master station, and the master station sends it out to all the speakers in your home. So if someone comes up and pushes the button and the chime module doesn't ring, there are three potential failure points. You could have a problem with the button, you could have a problem with the wiring that connects the button to the chime module, or you could have a problem with the chime module itself. It is, of course, always possible that you have more than one problem, but let's not overcomplicate this. So the first thing to do, what I would do on a service call where the complaint is my doorbell isn't ringing, is I would go to the master station and open it up and locate the chime module. Now, different models of master stations have the chime module mounted in different locations, so you'll have to identify which model of master station you have and how to open it up and where the chime module for your model is installed. The easiest way to do that is to download a copy of the installation instructions and it'll show where the chime module is installed in your unit. Once you've located the chime module, you'll see that it has the four screws, just like in the diagram. And the easiest way to check the chime module is to take a short piece of scrap wire and you strip the insulation off the ends, just like this one. 
This is just a little four inch piece of red wire and I've stripped the insulation off the end so we have bare ends. And all you're going to do is take one end of the wire and hold it on the common terminal and touch the other one on the front terminal. That's the same as pushing the button out on the front porch. If you make a connection between the common terminal and the front terminal and the chime module rings, then you know the chime module is good. If you want to double check or perhaps triple check, you can put the one end of the wire on the common ter terminal and touch the rear screw and it should ring one note. And you can touch the side screw and it'll ring two notes. If that's how your chime module operates, when you jumper across the screws, you know your chime module is good. And you can go on to looking for other problems. After you verify that the chime module works by using the jumper, the next step is to look at the push button out on the front porch. Push buttons have a hard life because they're outside on the front of your house and they're in the heat and the wind and the rain and the snow. And the contacts inside the button can become corroded and they won't make a good connection and without a good connection there isn't anything to trigger the chime module to make it ring. I've done a lot of service calls where the complaint is my doorbell doesn't work and being the new tone man I know exactly how to go up and push the button and sometimes wiggle it with your finger just a little bit and you can make it work. That's a really good sign of dirty contacts inside the button Sometimes also when you push the button, it feels very grainy or gritty or what I like to refer to as crunchy. And that's another sign that the button needs to be replaced. I'm not a big fan of cleaning the inside contacts of doorbell buttons. New tone doorbell buttons cost about $9 and it's much easier to just replace it with a new one. So how do you actually check the button? Well, first thing you have to do is go out to your front porch and remove the button from wherever it's installed. If it's installed on the door speaker grill, you would take the grill off the wall and when you turn it over, you'll see the back of the button where the two wires are connected. If it's mounted on the wall down below the speaker, then you would remove the screws that hold it in place and remove that from the wall. Either way, what you're ending up with is you're looking at the back of the button where the two wires are connected. The easiest way to test the button is to not actually test the button at all, but it's to eliminate the button from the circuit. So remove the button from wherever it's installed, turn it over, find the two screws on the back of the button, and remove the two wires from the screw. Once you've removed the wire, you'll probably see that the copper wire is not clean and shiny anymore like this is. Kind of hard to see. Clean and shiny. It'll be dull and sometimes it'll be kind of green colored and the green is oxidation or corrosion that's built up on the wire and oxidation and corrosion prevents it, the copper wire from making a good connection. So if your wire is dull or green colored, snip off the ends of the wire and strip back the insulation a little bit so you have clean copper and all you really have to do is touch the two wires together. If you touch the two wires together and the chime module rings, then you've found out that the button's bad and you need to buy a new button. You can get a real new tone button from us or you can go down to your local hardware store. Doorbell buttons are a fairly generic item and can universally be used to replace existing new tone buttons. The only exception to that is some doorbell buttons nowadays have LEDs inside of them to light the button up so you can see it at night. You cannot use a button with a built-in LED when you have a chime module. You can use a button that has a small incandescent light bulb in it like the new tone buttons do, but not an LED. So again, we've crossed the wires and it rings and we know it's a bad button. So what happens if you touch the wires and it still doesn't ring? So if you follow backwards a little bit, you'll remember that we've tested the chime module and we know that works. And we've removed the button and we've touched the ends of the wires together, but now it doesn't ring. That's a really good indication that you have a problem with your wiring. Most of the time when you have a wiring problem that prevents the chime module from ringing, it's because you have somewhere you have 
a break in the wire. And since you have a break in the wire, when you make the connection here, either with the button or the bare ends of the wire, the connection stops at the break. So there's nothing triggering the chime module to tell it to ring. If you have broken wires, you don't have a lot of options. You have to either find the brakes and repair them or run a new wire between the button and the chime module. Now remember we talked about some installations will have multi-conductor cables and let's say your installer put in a cable that has six wires in it. Well, you have to have a minimum of four wires to make a standard Newtone intercom door station work. It's two wires for the speaker and two wires for the push button, so that's a total of four wires. But if you have a six wire cable, you have two extra or unused wires. So what you can try is utilizing the two un wires that have been unused, connecting them to the button. You also have to go back to the master station, find the other ends of the unused wires and put them on the chime module terminals and see if those work. If that wire is still good, you've lucked out, problem solved, you're all done. If not, you'll have to rerun the wire. Those are the common reasons why chime modules won't ring. To check the wire to know definitively whether or not there's a break in the wire, I have a video in our fundamentals playlist that talk, talks about how to check and troubleshoot intercom wiring. I'm not really going to go all of, over all of that in this video, but you should watch that video, get an ohm meter or a continuity tester, and then you can actually check the wire and make sure it's bad before you spend an afternoon crawling around your attic looking for a broken wire. So let's talk about problem number two, your chime module won't stop ringing. Problems that cause chime modules to ring continuously over and over and over again are actually very similar to problems that prevent the chime module from ringing at all. Perhaps it's just a little bit backwards. You have the same setup. You have your master station with a chime module installed, a button at the front porch, and wires that connect the button to the chime module. First thing to check is just like before, you want to check the chime module first. Let's say that you come home one day and your chime module has been is ringing over and over and over again. One thing to mention about this before we get into the troubleshooting is that having the chime module ring continuously for hours and hours and hours at a time is a very bad thing. It will over time damage your master station and then you'll have to have it repaired. So don't just turn the volumes down on all your speakers and ignore it. Something has to be done and it should be done in short order. So you come home and your chime module is ringing and ringing and ringing and it won't stop. First thing to check. We're gonna do it in a slightly different order than we did when we were checking for reasons why it won't ring. Now we're gonna start outside at the button. Stuck buttons is a very common problem. So what you would do is go out to your front porch, remove the button from wherever it's installed, turn it over, find the two screws on the back of the button, and remove the two wires. If the chime module stops ringing, you found your problem, it's time for a new button. Same rules apply as I talked about before for replacing the button. Almost any doorbell button will work, but not one with an LED. Let's say you take the screw, the wires off the back of the button and the chime module continues to ring. Well, then we know it's one of two things. It's either a problem with the wires that connect to the chime module or the chime module itself. So at that point, you go to your master station, you open it up, you locate your chime module, and what you have to do to figure out where the problem is, you have to disconnect the wire from the common terminal. By disconnecting the wire from the common terminal, we've now eliminated the possibility that the wire is the problem. If when you disconnect the wire from the common terminal, if the chime module suddenly stops ringing, then you know that you have a problem with your wiring. And that problem is likely to be that you have a short in the wire somewhere. Same rules apply with a shorted pair of wires as it does with a pair of wires with a break in it. You either have to find the short and solve it, replace the wire, 
or again, if you're lucky enough to have extra wires, you might be able to utilize the extra wires to bypass the problem and get it working again. Again, go back to our fundamentals video about checking wires on intercom systems, see how that applies to what you need to do and follow it. But let's say that you went to the master station and you disconnected the wire from the common terminal and the chime module continues to ring. That means that you have a bad chime module. Chime modules can have what's called a self-triggering problem. It's not uncommon. It used to happen a lot in the early and mid 80s, but by the time we get to say 1989 or 1990, it wasn't as much of a problem. The other thing that can cause a chime module to trigger over and over and over again is that it may have been damaged if you live in an area that has a lot of storms with thunder and lightning, and sometimes lightning will flash in the sky and the voltage from the lightning will travel down the wires that are connected to the push button and it'll zap the chime module and damage it and that's why it triggers over and over and over again. If you have a chime module that's triggering on its own while after you've already disconnected the wires, the easiest way to make it stop is to unplug the ribbon cable from the socket where it's plugged into the master station. That will make it unplug. That will make it stop ringing, but you also won't have a door chime any longer. So those are the fundamentals of sorting out problems with chime modules. I hope you found this video to be interesting and I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you find our other videos to be interesting or helpful, please subscribe to our channel. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all for today. See you on the next one.